UW360 is proudly supported by Pacific Office Automation, Copy, Print, Workflow, and IT, Problem Solved, BECU, a not-for-profit, member-owned credit union, The technology for actually interpreting brain signals in, in real time, rapidly, is quite new. So this has been happening maybe over the last 10 years or so. And also uh, the fact that there's technology now that can uh, stimulate the brain, uh, even that is, is reasonably uh, new, new technology. And I think what uh, people haven't done before is putting the two together. At uh, Harvard, I showed that you could record from a human brain and then send that information to uh, the brain of a rat that was anesthetized and then make, it, uh, make the tail of the rat move. Uh, but what had not been done before was actually uh, one human sending information to another human's brain and the two of them collaborating, uh, cooperating to solve the task. We found that the technology exists right now um, to do a simple proof of concept uh, demonstration that you can record from one brain and then stimulate another brain. I've been working for the past years on uh, modeling how the brain works, and in particular how the brain represents knowledge. And we've been using TMS and functional magnetic imaging to understand and reverse engineering how information is represented in the brain. From my point of view, I, I was actually uh, not sure that uh, you know, the technology that we have, this technology called uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, you know, is that really a technology that would allow uh, somebody to uh, transmit information directly into the brain? Just try to remain calm, focused. <laughs> so during the experiment, I'm wearing a cap that looks like this. It kind of looks like a swim cap, uh, but it's a cap for a procedure called uh, electroencephalography. Uh, the short form for that is EEG. And this is a very standard technology that uh, people have been using for uh, monitoring sleep patterns. Well, but more recently, people in the field of uh, brain-computer interfacing have been using this for uh, recording uh, brain signals non-invasively and then using that to control uh, things like a cursor. Okay, move it a little bit posterior. On our side, we first map the part of the brain that controls muscle activity, in particular the part of the brain that controls my right hand. And this part is actually on my left part of the head. Then we use this machine to generate uh, electrical fields. This part goes into a set a big box uh, of electrical equipment that generates really, really strong electrical current. The electrical current flow to this uh, coil and generate an H-shaped figure. This in turn generates two cone-shaped magnetic fields and at the point in the middle of these two magnetic fields the magnetic intensity is particularly strong, so strong in fact that it can trigger the activity of the neurons indirectly. And whenever Rajesh was thinking about moving the hand, the computers were controlling this electrical equipment that was generating these magnetic fields through powerful electrical currents. And these were in turn triggering a corresponding movement in my hand. I really didn't realize what had happened uh, until like a few moments after it had happened. And it was uh, like, holy man, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> It was, yeah. it was actually even more difficult for me because I was completely isolated. I couldn't see the right. screen, I couldn't right. hear any, anything. Right. And actually, for the first time, I don't think I even noticed that my hand moved right. because I was like so nervous. But then what, what gave it away was that everybody in my lab was like cheering up and right. saying, clapping. And, like, and right. in that moment, I remember I thought right. like, we did it. In terms of therapeutic and medical applications, we have a colossal range of options. But imagine these two possible scenarios. Imagine, for instance, people who have been affected by a stroke and they've lost basic functions of their brain that need to be relearned, like moving, walking, swallowing in some cases. We haven't never tried this and we don't know if it's possible, but we believe that it would be worth exploring the idea that you can help the recovery process by literally transmitting the motor programs of a healthy brain of a brain that has recovered from a similar lesion to the brain that has been damaged this way speeding up the recovery function. And we can generalize this idea, we call this model, the brain tutor and the brain student, which are now connected and can exchange information to any uh, set of possible diseases, including psychological diseases, psychiatric manifestations, symptoms, where you can have two brains paired up and one brain being a healthy brain driving the activity of the disease or malfunctioning brain and slowly reshaping its function in a way that is more functional.
It definitely spurs some interest and uh, lots of people ask and email us for details. So we believe that other people are going to replicate uh, our setup and our funding. Which yeah. is good. That's the way science right. works. We do experiments right. and we make them public because we want people mm -hmm. to do it and push forward. It's a collaborative right. enterprise right. in the global scale. All right. <laughs> <laughs>